Nissan was one of the first brands that got into the small and fun subcompact crossover segment when they introduced the Juke back in 2011. Now that it's time for a successor, they are debuting an all new nameplate called the Kicks, but it very much carries on with the Juke's funky and fun character. So with that said, let's go ahead and see if this exciting crossover stands out from the competition. We would like to extend a special thanks to Gates Nissan in Richmond, Kentucky for providing us with today's vehicle. If you want to find out more information about their dealership and massive inventory of new Nissans, then check the video description for both their physical and web addresses. So like pretty much every Nissan, you've got this typical key fob and standard push button start. However, the intelligent entry system comes on the SV trim and the XR trim only. On those same two trims, you will also get the remote start system. So the inside has a lot of the same funky styling as the outside, but before we get into that, let's check under the hood. Even though Nissan recently introduced another subcompact crossover to the US market, the Kick shares almost nothing with the similar sized Rogue Sport. Under the hood, there is a single tiny engine a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, making 125 horsepower and 115 pound feet of torque. While that is less power than most rivals, it's important to note that the Kicks is pushing somewhere between 200 and 500 pounds less weight than those competitors. That engine is paired exclusively with an updated CVT with simulated gear changes. And unlike the Rogue Sport, there is no optional all-wheel drive. This combination of low weight, a small engine, and a CVT are very potent when it comes to fuel economy. It is the new class leader in the segment, coming in at 31 city, 36 highway, 33 combined. That beats things like the Toyota CHR not by a little, but by 5 mpg on the highway. Anyways, that hits the basics, so let's move on to the hip new exterior design. Where a car is designed certainly has a lot of impact on how it looks. So when you find out this was designed in Brazil, it starts to make sense why it looks nothing like the Juke or Rogue Sport. Our plain white paint job does its best to tone things down, but you can still see the fun personality peeking through via design cues like the soft U-shaped grille and oversized headlights. For the most part, every Kicks looks like this, but on the SR you would get darkened chrome on the grille, and most importantly, these halogen headlights are changed out for more modern looking LED ones. Along the bottom, you have a black bumper, except on the SR where you get a silver accent and fog lights. 
the rest of the kick styling is just as cool. On the side you have blacked out pillars to make for a floating roof effect. Or if you really want to stand out, Nissan will paint the roof a totally different color for a small extra charge. You can choose a sleek option like black, or something bolder like white or even orange. This reminds me a lot of the Volvo XC40. And then around back, there is an interesting shaped tailgate with a large window, and your typical Nissan Boomerang taillights. The black bumper would have body colored accents on the SR, but the single exhaust pipe is always hidden. Finally, the SR would have a larger rear spoiler, though all models get these roof rails. So overall, this is a really hip exterior, but without going overboard into the ugly category like some of the rivals. Even though this is a small and cheap car, the wheels are not that way at all. This mid-level SV and top SR share these really nice looking 17 inch black contrast alloys. Or if you prefer something darker, there are optional blacked out wheels as a dealer accessory. The base trim is the only one to do without alloys, instead having 16 inch steel wheels with hubcaps. The brakes are 10.2 inch ventilated disc in the front and 8 inch drum brakes in the rear. And the tires are all seasons. Coming up to the mirrors, each trim gets a different look, with the S getting a matte black finish, the SV body color, and the SR metallic black. They will be heated on the SV and up, but only have turn signals on the SR. On the safety front, forward emergency braking is standard across all trims and blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert comes on the mid-grade SV and up. However, if you want more advanced stuff like lane departure intervention and intelligent cruise control, then you'll have to get the more expensive Rogue Sport. The last thing I want to look at is the fuel range. The Kix comes with a really small 10.8 gallon fuel tank, which means the range is not as exceptional as it could be at 356 miles. This is behind most rivals, but not by much since the fuel economy is so much better. Well that pretty much covers everything on the outside, so now let's see if the cabin is just as stylish. So at first glance inside the cabin, I can already tell that this has more personality than the typical vehicle in this price bracket. That personality does not come from the colors though, since Nissan gives you the Henry Ford selection of black cloth across all three trims. You do get some orange accent stitching on the SR, and if you choose the SR premium package, the seating can be switched to black synthetic leather. The door trim's a little blank looking, but you do have some padded cloth on the armrest and some nice silver trim. Both the front windows are one touch automatic up and down. Every kicks, regardless of trim, comes with this six way manual adjusting driver's seat. The cloth itself feels very durable and I appreciate that they spiced it up with contrast stitching and diamond patterns. My first impression of the cabin is that it feels pretty big in here, and the materials look class above. All of the upper dash is hard as expected, but in the middle you have this cool aluminum light -like trim or leather on the SR. Interestingly though, all trims have this stitched leather through here, and everything fits together with heftiness. Press the standard button to start. 
Once you do, this 7 inch display will fire up across all trims. I like how it sticks out from the rest of the dash. So the gauges have a new design that I haven't seen in any prior Nissans, with an analog speedometer and a 7 inch display on the other side. This is a pretty slick setup since you can take away the tack and replace it with info that might be more pertinent at the time. The base S will do without this though. Thankfully, all models get this nice flat bottom steering wheel for the electric power steering, which would be leather wrapped on the SR. On the left hand side, you have buttons for the gauge display and audio, and on the right side, the cruise control and phone. Finally, the wheel itself is manually adjusted. You do also have a little storage bin over here. And as far as the rest of the storage, it's good for the class. Like a lot of subcompacts, you have an armrest instead of a center console. But over here you do still have some storage, and two charging USB ports. There's a bit more in the middle, but the biggest place is up in the front where it is pretty deep. And you do have even more connections. The shifter also has a nice design to it. There is no manual mode, and there are never any paddle shifters. When you go into reverse, a high quality backup camera appears with active trajectory. You can even get the 360 degree around view monitor on the SR. Moving on from that, the SV and SR come with this single zone automatic climate control system. Really, it doesn't get any easier than this, with two simple knobs and five self-explanatory buttons. Plus, if you got the SR with the premium package, you would also get heated seats. Anyways, let's sample the base six speaker audio system. The sound quality is impressively immersive for a bass setup, but the optional Bose personal sound system with speakers in the headrest is available for those who want more. Now let's check out the infotainment. The infotainment is another distinguishing factor from the Rogue Sport, since this has the new system and it does not. This is a very easy system to get a grasp of since you have a customizable home screen where you can add all your apps and widgets. Phone has all the typical things, like your contacts, but more importantly is that both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are on board for all the trims. It's also important to note that those systems are the only way to get navigation since it is not offered otherwise. Message from Michael. Of course you have the standard Bluetooth audio, and clicking sources shows you all the other available options. That more or less covers the important stuff, but we do have a detailed Nissan Connect tutorial for those of you who want to see more. A link to that is provided in the description. The interior mirror is always manually dimming. Up top, you'll notice the lack of a moonroof, and that's because one is not available at all on any trim. But overall, the lack of a moonroof doesn't change my positive opinion of the cabin. This is a vehicle that gives you plenty of tech and space, but with a price lower than expected. It is a cheap car that doesn't feel cheap, and that's a win in my book.
Now let's see if the rest of the cabin retains those same positives. The rear door trim of the kicks is made of the same materials as the front. We've got a padded cloth material here, and the rest is hard touch, but that's kind of expected for the class. The window is power adjusting, but it's not automatic. Down below, you do have a bottle holder here. In the rear of the kicks, you have 33.2 inches of rear leg room and 38 and a half inches of headroom. That places it about two inches larger than the CHR, and in headroom, that's actually pretty good. The seats are, of course, cloth, and I found them to be pretty comfortable back here. In the center here, you do have a cup holder or storage spot, and in front of that, you do have two smart charging USBs. There is no armrest on this kicks, but that's also not expected for the class. Up on the roof, you do have a LED or a regular light, headliner, and an assist grip. As far as your space is concerned, this is behind Drew's position, and I have about three to four inches of leg room, and my feet can slide easily up under the seat, which is really nice for the class. Scooting over, this is with the seat all the way back, leg room is reduced to about an inch or two, and once again, feet can slide up under the seat, so it's really not all that bad. Summed up, the rear seat of the Kicks does exactly what it sets out to do. It's spacious and comfortable for the class, and it'd be perfect for a growing family or someone who couldn't necessarily afford to buy a rope. Getting out here, the seats do fold 60-40 split. Just grab this little button, and it folds right back down. The tailgate of the kicks obviously is on power, so just walk up to it and grab this handle off the lid. Once inside, you'll find a class leading 25.3 cubic feet behind the second row seats, which expands to 64.6 cubic feet with the seats folded. That is about double that of the Toyota CHR, and I can tell you it is very spacious back here. Underneath the floor, you do have a spare tire, no, no flits of flat kit, and you do have a Tanyu cover here. Obviously, the passenger seat of the kicks is manually adjusting. In front of the passenger, you do have this nice trim here. And a dampened glove box that is actually really big. The sun visor is also really big, and it does have a light and mirror, as well as an extension at the side. It's also nice to see that it has leather padding here where your knees might touch. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching this in-depth look at the 2018 Nissan Kicks SV. Please stay watching for a quick look at the pricing, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons below. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.